Welcome back. So from here on out, until we hit some important story bits, we'll be doing a lot of jumping around in the game's timeline. The boon of the Nonary Game Edition is the addition of a flowchart, which I've avoided showing until now. It used to be to get each ending, you had to start from the beginning, fast forward through text, play all the puzzles, and try to pick the right paths to get to the new endings. Now, we can just hop to decision points and critical conversations, which will speed up the process of reaching the endgame immensely. There's still a lot of important story as we do this, so watch on to see what we learn and do. Alright, so now we have three endings unlocked. Axe, Knife, and Submarine. Ah, alright, so here's the flowchart. Um, so, got, so we have all like these keys and these locks, and I need to get the X's off of all of these of the same color to unlock a certain ending, which means going back to these are not going to do me any good, because what's going to happen is when I get to, basically this side of the path as I understand, is going to be closed off to me until I clear these. So... don't have... white key... don't... I go back here and then go down... eight door path? Oh, shit. I did not mean to click back out of that. I keep forgetting that get back is a different thing. You, and you, flow chart. Okay. Sorry, I get to listen to rumbling while I figure this out. So. Do I need to. No, let's. Play through this section and see if we get any new dialogue. Oh, oh damn it. Flow chart. Four and five doors. Yes. Please let me go. There we go. Alright. And we skip. So we're gonna see what the uh, dialogue does here. Oh. It Thanks to format? Snake's card, at least we have some idea of how this all works. There we go. I prefer that view for this. Alright, back Ooh. to skip. So we're gonna see if anything changes here. Because we have a key unlocked. Uh, let's do that. That was the right answer. The different choices, the numbers there are inconsequential. It shouldn't matter which door. Because I'm probably just going to skip down to another path. Uh, let's do four. We're gonna go through door five, which has a dead body behind it. Because I apologize, this part's probably gonna be super, super interesting to watch as I try to uh, figure out how to do this. However, this is easier than it used to be. In the old DS game, you would literally have to go through and fast forward play through all of the entire ending and not be able to at least hop around a little bit and do the proper unlocks. I know I have one of them. It was from this puzzle. I need to do this puzzle again? Shouldn't. Just skipping through everything. check the flow chart again. Okay, good. Alright, so this is a good sign. We have these unlocked. So we're gonna jump down to... Check what that is. That's a seven door. So we're gonna jump to here. I should be able to fast through well, the text. Don't have a choice now. Skip down to the seven room. Verify that that unlocks. And then we'll go hit the ending. Uh, we want door seven. all this text again.
Okay. Go through here. Actually, I'm gonna slow down this dialogue if only because this is a pretty funny moment. Well, actually, we'll just put on auto advance. Only 81. No time to waste, guys. Let's get moving. Ooh. Look, the door on the left. I can see the dead. We'll just let this scene play out. Like, if, if only because I, I find it very funny. <sighs> I don't think it's my favorite line in the game so far. That's, uh... That's the ace going, oh, not good, when the Snake and Clover or Snake and Lotus it fight. Stopped. It stopped. <laughs> this is the second time we've gone through one of these numbered doors, but... Whew. You never really get used to it. I would have thought a guy your size would have bigger balls than that. Over. Brutal every time. What? What the hell did you just say? Say it again! I dare you! You have no... You little... You wanna die? Seven, don't fight I'd like children. To see you try. Clover, don't fight grown men. Fucking brat, alright! Let's go! Hey, hey, calm down, guys. This isn't the time for this. Let's get through it now because that was the only interesting bit. Okay. Weird medical dummy. Might have to go have one conversation here because I think I remember that there is a thing I have to talk about. We'll find out. We're going to check the flowchart as soon as we can. Alright. Low chart. Oh, get on the map screen. Okay, so. I might have to do the entire puzzle, but since I did this literally the other day, it should be pretty quick. Looks like it's locked. Oh, right, I have to get the key. I get the key from... Grab this torso, because we need that. I'm gonna grab forceps. I apologize, this is gonna be speed solve of it. If you want to see this puzzle in more detail uh, on my YouTube channel, I can't remember which part it is. It's either part 10 or 11, I think? I think it's 10. Uh, John and Lucy. Um, that's where I actually go through and solve this, including me spending entirely too long on this puzzle. That... The puzzle that I'll solve in like three seconds that I sat on for like 10 minutes. Did you pay the slit this thing's chest? Yeah, sure is. There's something in there. Maybe you can get it out. Run. Nope. Got the change to the item I need. I want the forceps, because it's a small hole. We pull that out. We combine it with the knife. Let's try cutting this organ with a scalpel. We found an organ key. And it's not a key for, like, it's a key we found an organ. Not a key for an organ. Okay. Grab these in case we can do these puzzles, but it might be the case that after I do this conversation point, um, I'll be unlocked and we can skip forward. But we'll find out. Again, if you want to see how the puzzle actually works, uh, yeah, I, I figured that was a good one to slow down for because it's just, it's so much fun. Big right arm, big heart, back. I think when we leave. I think we should go back? Yeah, I think that's probably best. Okay. Seven, hey, seven. and I are gonna have a conversation. Oh, well. Is, is that a medicine bottle? I got curious about it. Here. Ethylene diamine tartrate? Yeah, that's right. CDT. What kind of medicine is that? It's not medicine. I think it's an industrial strength detergent. Why would they have oh. something like that here? Well, probably to clean stuff up. Clean what up? Fuck if I know. Looks like it's cleaned my brain up. Wait, you remember something? Yeah. Well, I remember a story about EDT. Happened about 50 years ago. There was this factory somewhere in America making big old EDT crystals. <laughs> they were big making them as an industrial strength cleaner. Like I told you, but... A year after the factory started up, something strange started happening with the crystals. Water Once the crystals turned into a... And again, I'm gonna kind of just skip through this, because again, if you want to see this... There's another that. playthrough that has crystals the same way. where I let now, him talk. All of a sudden, in fact, ever Stuff turns to a hydrate. It's kind of weird. Years before, they'd never gotten it. After it happened at the first factory, bread. It was like 
like the molecules were communicating with one another. I don't think we had this line of uh, conversation before. Transmitting information in a way yes. humans couldn't perceive. This phenomena spread throughout the world. Right. Yeah, that's that's it exactly. Now we're gonna slow down the conversation. How did you know? I heard another story, uh, kind of like that one. When? In the freezer. What? The freezer? So in the freezer, we learned about uh, blitzring crystallization and ice nine, which melts at ninety six degrees. Yeah. June told me. Hmm. Ice that doesn't melt at room temperature, huh? That sounds familiar. Yeah, hold on. I, I feel like I can remember something. It's right there. Do you? Here we go. Do you know about Do you Ice Nine? Know about Ice Nine? Ice Nine? Ice Nine. Ice Nine. Ice. 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 That's it. I remember now. That woman, she's on this boat. That woman? Alice! Who's Alice? Come on, the woman who won't melt at room temperature! Oh, I thought Connie was just going crazy talking about, you know, non-melting women. Huh? You know how the Titanic sank on April 15th, 1912, right? Yeah, more than 1,500 people died. Worst maritime accident in history. What about it? Did you hear about the boat that was sent to collect the dead bodies? Uh, I think that was the RMS Carpathia, right? Who knows this? It was a cruise liner, just like the Titanic. No, that was the ship that picked up the survivors. The ship that collected the dead bodies was the C.S. McKay Bennett. Mm. The McKay Bennett showed up on April 17th, two days after the accident. It set out from Halifax, a port in Canada, and recovered 306 bodies. The Atlantic that far north is really cold. It would have to be for there to be icebergs and stuff. Anyway, the bodies they pulled out of the water were frozen solid. This isn't a very nice story. So, <laughs> what happened next? Well, they say the McKay Bennett recovered something more than just dead bodies. There were various bits of stuff floating around in the water. Things the drowned had carried with them, or stuff that dislodged as the ship sank. One of the things they found was a coffin. Oh. A coffin? Yeah, a wooden one. The craftsman who made it must have been pretty skilled. It wasn't just a wooden coffin. It was all wood. No nails, no reinforcements, no gaps in the wood anywhere. The thing was airtight. Oh, how fancy. The crew got pretty curious about what might be inside it and opened it up. I had to get a wedge and hammer it open. And it Wonderful sound effects. Inside, they found a woman. Or, I guess you should say, they found the dead body of a woman. Her hair was thick and black, and her skin rich brown with no blemishes or signs of decomposition. They say that she looked gorgeous, like a goddess. She was obviously dead, but everyone who looked at her said she just looked like she was sleeping. Her skin was so lifelike, she looked like she might wake up any minute. But she didn't. Like the rest of the bodies they found, she was frozen solid. Eventually, the McKay Bennett finished searching and returned to Halifax. The 306 bodies were unloaded and taken ashore. However, it was warm enough that they began to thaw. They say that the Ew. stink was horrible. But there was one body that didn't thaw. And that was... The girl in the coffin. That's right. Everybody thought for sure that she'd melt and start to rot like the rest of them eventually. Weeks passed and nothing happened. Then a month passed. Then another. It was summer, and she was still frozen solid. After a while, people started to say she was some sort of miracle. Rumors about her started to spread. People came to visit Halifax from all over. After a while, people started to call her All Ice and Alice. Of course, those rumors didn't last long. Why? Well, she up and disappeared. One day Alice was there, the next day she wasn't. Da 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 da. They say someone snuck into where they were keeping her and stole her body. With the body gone, the rumors followed pretty quickly. After a while, no one remembered her. You might be able to find something about her. You find a newspaper from back then, but that's about it. Wait, you just said that she was on this boat. Yeah, I did. Alice has got to be somewhere on this ship. Why? Now why the hell would you say something like that? Because I know. And just what is it you know? What happened to Alice after she was stolen? All right. Happened to Alice. Well, around that time, the word was that there was a special black market in New York. All millionaires from all over the world. I've heard that Alice went up for auction there. The person who won the auction was Lord Dashiell Gordain. Ah, a name we've heard before. He survived the Titanic sinking and became a strange collector of Titanic woods. You've heard that name before, right? Lord Gordain. Oh, 
isn't he the guy who bought the Gigantic? The Titanic sister ship? Yeah, that's him. Although, I guess he hadn't done that yet. What do you mean? Gordain bought Alice in 1912. Four years later, in 1916, he bought the Gigantic, and he hid Alice somewhere on the Gigantic, but nobody knows where. He died in 1931, and apparently he died without ever telling anyone where Alice was hidden. However... However... what? Well, he did have one close friend who asked him... All right. Where is Alice? And he said, Alice sleeps in a small chamber past the forest of knowledge beneath the navel of the Gigantic. Okay, that is a very interesting way to phrase things. What the hell is that? Some kind of riddle? Your guess is as good as mine. So that's it. Whatever you think, I believe it. She's hidden somewhere on the Gigantic. In other words, she's hidden somewhere on this ship. Hmm. That is very weird. Hey! What are you two doing over there? Stop wasting time and get over here! Okay, okay, we're coming. Jeez! Yeah, so, anyway, that's the story. It might be useful someday. Don't forget it. Alice. Huh. And now we won't forget it. That mummy wasn't, wasn't just, just a normal, normal mummy. mummy. They, they say, say that, that she was frozen. frozen. The, story the story says that from the time, time of its discovery, discovery all, all the way through, through to when it got, got put on the Titanic. Titanic. Even, Even though, though it was carried through the, through the desert, desert her body never melted. Then was that Egyptian priestess, Alice? Did the water in her body become Ice Nine? No, that, that's nuts. There's no way somebody like that could exist. All right, now we... All right, I gotta keep doing the puzzle. That's not bad, though. We have everything we need for this room. It's locked. We have the key, right? Oh. Like, we have the key, right? So I click right past it. Okay. Operation room. Light puzzle. On a beaker. Point of red. Black. Ooh. White. Hey, it turned red. Forget about that. Did you hear that just now? Beaker with red liquid in it. Alright. Blue liquid. Let's put in the blue liquid next. Let's put the red liquid back in the bottle. Blue light turns on. I heard a noise. It sounds like something unlocking. Red liquid again. I get it. You combine the red liquid and the blue liquid to make a purple one. Blue light turned on. Blah blah blah. Blue light's just nearby. Go take a look. Have okay, a purple liquid in a jar that we're never going to use again. Leg. Ooh. Leg. Ooh. Torso. Stomach. Whatever. Is... Okay. I'll grab it, but I don't need it. Basically tells me how to do the next puzzle, but I remember. Uh, no, we're not going back in the preparation room. We are gonna go to this table. Okay, so we collect the six parts of the medical mannequin, so we'll put parts here. Let's see, John, blah blah. But again, like I said, just clicking through this quickly because, uh, hey, nothing happened. Wrong um, weight. Yeah, I know there's a scale at the side of the bed. Maybe we need to get the scale to a specific number. How are we going to do that? I think we're supposed to swap our body parts with John's. Let's give it a shot. Operating instructions, blah, blah, blah. Click to swap. Call. I think we end up swapping every body part. Does this work? Nope. All the parts back. There we go. Close enough. Hey, Junpei, I just heard something. It came from John's operating table. We better check it out. Yeah, it's John's table. Oh, way. Okay. Oh, huh? The lid on the scale. Hey, it opened. Oh, I get it. It must have opened because we matched John's weight to what's on the chart. Alright. Jupiter key. Ooh. Now we can leave because the door in that other room... There's a door in the uh, preparation room that had the Jupiter symbol on it. So... Zoop. Zoop. Hey, hold on. Oh, uh, what's up? Where's Clover? Huh? Oh, god damn it. Where the hell did she go? Let's set this to skip, see if we get anything different. We might this time. Actually, the cool thing with the, uh, ah, with the skip function is if you run into something you haven't done before, a decision point, it'll stop. We'll give her, so this is. 
again, since we didn't play through the first half of the path, um, when we were doing a puzzle in the one cabin room, we were talking to Santa, he found a bookmark with the four leaf clover on it, and was like, oh, I hate this because it represents, like, hope, luck, faith, and something else, and he gave us the bookmark. So we are going to give this to Clover and probably go over what the leaves mean. It's in my pocket somewhere. Uh, ah, here it is. A four-leaf clover. Hey, did you know? Each leaf means something. Hope, faith, love, and luck. That was close. Not too bad for remembering something I did like three streams ago. That's what a four-leaf clover stands for. Take it. Use it as a good luck charm. Listen to me, Clover. No matter what happens, you can never lose hope. You have to remember what's most important, and that's to have faith and to have love. If you can remember all of those, that'll bring you good luck. Snake, I mean, your brother, he's not dead. He's alive somewhere. I'm sure of it. You've just got to believe in that. Thank you. Aw. That was actually a really Thank sweet you. scene. Now come on. Seven's waiting for us at the exit. Wait. Before we go, there's one thing I want to ask you. What's that? What do you think when you hear the word experiment? Uh, what? Oh. Uh, I guess it was just a coincidence, then. I mean, that you knew about the four-leaf clover. Uh, look, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I don't want to be a jerk, but you are making less than no sense right now. Good job, Junpei. You're being a jerk. Oh, no, no, no. It's nothing. Just forget about it. Oh, don't, don't give me that. Uh, you really think I could just drop this? What is this experiment you were talking about? Oh. I promise you won't tell anyone. Oh, more exposition. Cross my heart. And normally I make fun of just the random exposition, but this is the interesting really? part. Really? I can trust you, right? Of course you can. Okay, then. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what happened on this ship nine years ago. Wait, wait, wait. Y on this ship? Yeah, this ship. It was an experiment to test some sort of psychic thing. Communicating through these fields that you can't see. Fields that you can't see? Like, think about this. This is John, right? But is he really John? Huh? Isn't this like Locke's socks? Really, we're going for Locke's socks, not the ship of Theseus or the axe problem? Or the ship of Theseus? Aha, uh -huh, there we go. Again, I am uh, preempting myself. Also, the sound's gonna go off for a second. I'm gonna re up the uh, bass volume of the game. Um, okay, turn that back up to where it was. You don't know? You haven't heard of those paradoxes? No? Really? Okay, well, pay attention then. This is how Locke's socks works. Let's say I've got a pair of socks. They're my favorite socks. One of them gets a hole in it. What would you do if that was your sock, Junpei? It's my favorite sock. Well, I'm I, patch I it guess up. I'd patch it up, get some cloth, and close up the hole. But what if another hole opens? I'd add another patch, I suppose. What if another hole opened after that? Um, another patch, I guess? Well, let's say you just keep adding new patches until eventually the original cloth of the sock is totally gone. Once you get to that point, can you really say they're the same socks you started with? Hmm. Uh, well, that, hmm, that's, oh, that's tough. So, that's the lock socks thing? Yeah, the ship of Theseus is a lot like it. The ship of Theseus. If you keep fixing the damaged parts of a ship, eventually it ends up with none of the parts it started with. Can you really say that ship is the same one you started with? And what if you took all the old parts from the first ship and built another one somewhere else? Then which ship is the real ship of Theseus? The one you repaired, or the one you built with all the original parts? Hmm. Hey, do you think it's the same? What's the same? These guys. Is this John? Or is it Lucy now? Uh, John's head and heart are both his, but apart from those and a single arm, the rest of his body was once Lucy's. We're just like these mannequins. Think about it. The cells in our body change every day. Old ones die and new ones are born. 
maybe part of my arm is made of stuff from a fish I ate once. Or maybe part of your right side is made from a cow you ate. An entire cow. If you take it a little further, those cows and fishes are made from something else too, right? That's how we're all connected. Through fields that can't be seen with the naked eye. Hey, what the hell has taken you two so long? How long are you going to make me wait? We don't have time to screw around. Uh. Oh? What were you two doing? Was this some sort of secret meeting? No, it wasn't. We were just... Just... Playing. With the mannequins. <laughs> huh? Let's go, Jim. Playing with mannequins, huh? Didn't know you were into that kind of thing, Junpei. <sighs> Seven, don't be weird. <sighs> You're a dick. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna open it now. Is that cool? You don't need to keep asking, just do it, alright? <sighs> Fine then. <sighs> alright. All right. Let's get- Hey man, what's up with you? You're so serious, you know? Can't you sound more happy, you know, get a little excited? We'll skip here. No. There too, huh? Every door in this place is locked. All right. How about that one? All right. So that's a good sign. We are going to skip to here, I believe. Sorry for the footsteps. I did not expect that to keep happening. So stuff should happen here. Interesting. I didn't know I could jump to different parts of the puzzle. Let's start a chart room. And again, you're gonna watch me kind of flip solve the puzzle and we'll see when we run into some new dialogue. Okay. So, chart room. Ooh. Here, nautical charts. Ooh. Let's see. Go here. Next drawer, pocket watch. Ooh. Oh, pocket watch. Might I take a look at it? Yeah, there is. You checked on us. Now get out of here. We split this stuff up for a reason, all right? We're gonna be rude this time. That's a lie. We didn't have to split up the work. I just want to talk to Clover alone. That's why I sent Ace to the wheelhouse. Oh. There's something I want to ask her, and I don't want anyone to overhear us. I'm pretty sure Clover won't talk if there's anyone else around. That's why when Ace showed up again, I got a little desperate. I had to make him leave. Oh, ho. Oh. I see, of course. I apologize for the intrusion. Well, best of luck. <sighs> what was that about? Why are you looking at me like that? Oh, uh, no, 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 it's not like that. <laughs> What's it like then? I just wanted to hear the rest of that story. I didn't get a chance to ask you about it until now. What story? About the experiment, remember? The one you, you said something about an experiment that happened here nine years ago. I'm sorry, but I don't want to talk about that right now. I'm just not in the mood, okay? Uh. You understand, right? I'm just, I keep thinking about my brother. I, I can't stop. I mean, who would do something like that to my brother? So again, another point for anyone who hasn't been watching this the entire time. If we had gone through all of the dialogue path to get here, um, a group, including her, I think it was her, Seven, and Ace, would have gone into door three, which is one of the three options we had, the Seven and Eight doors, and found um, the corpse, or the exploded corpse, of her brother Snake's body in um, room three. So right now she's kind of distraught about that. <sighs> I can't forgive them. I'm not going to let them get away with it. They're going to pay for it. I promise. So, so, Junpei, who do you think did it? Well, if what Seven said was right, then there would have to be at least two of them. You need at least three people to open the numbered doors. And if you subtract Snake, that means there were at least two other people. You're right. So, what does that mean? Well, if we just look at the bracelet numbers, we should be able to figure it out. Who could have opened door three with Snake? Well, really, who and who, or who, who, and who? 
You mean it could have been four people? Well, technically, it's possible. Um, I don't know. That doesn't seem very likely. Why? Um, I'll tell you later. Why don't we just assume it was only two other people for now? Okay, uh, got it. Let's do that then. Then who do you think it could be? Hey! So what two bracelet numbers added to two would give a digital root of three? Let's see what options we get. Oh, oh god game. So we need to get ten? Ten and two. I love Clover, so it can't be June. Do any of these work? Santa and seven would be the only ones would make ten. Am I doing my math right? Three, yes. Yeah, so we needed to uh, add ten to two to get twelve and three. That's the only one we have that does ten, right? I could go through these really quick. So that's four, seven, eight, nine. Nine. Nine, ten, eleven. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. So yeah, the only one that would make sense would be... Santa and seven. Three and seven. Would it be Santa and seven? The digital root for Snake, Santa, and Seven is... Three! Wait, hold on. Are Santa and Seven... the killers? <sighs> What's wrong? Well, I thought about it, and... That's what I thought. Santa and Seven. If it was two people, then that's the only combination that works. Hey! Wait a minute there. Don't you think it's a little too early to be jumping to conclusions? Well, all I said is that those two would have been able to open door three with your brother. There might be other possibilities. Well, what other possibilities? Uh... Are you saying you think that it was three or four people? I really don't think that's likely. Why not? Can I borrow your pen and paper? Yeah, here. What's this? These are the combinations for three or four people. These eight combinations are the only possible ones. Oh, I see. Junpei? Yeah? I... I can trust you, right? Of course. Why would you need to ask that? Really? Yeah. So then I should get rid of B, D, G, and H, right? Of course. Just cross them out. And you should take off yours, too. The ones with four. So, what does that leave? A and E. So, Ace, Santa, June, and Ace, Santa, Seven, Lotus. Wait, it can't be A. Why? Because June's in that one. There's no way in hell she'd do something like that. Are you sure? I bet my life on it. Okay then. I can cross off A too, right? Yeah. Thank you, Toast. I'm very happy to have 50 now. Well, what have we got left? E. Do you know what this means? Everyone besides me, you, and June would be working together. Do you think that's likely? Hmm. If there were four people working together, they wouldn't be very cautious. I don't think they'd try that hard to hide what they were doing if they outnumbered us, right? Well, you do have a point. And besides, if Ace and Seven are working together, Clover is a sharp cookie, though. They could have easily gotten rid of me when I went to the shower room with them. But they didn't. They didn't even try anything. If they were killers, why wouldn't they? Oh, I see. Anyway, I understand now. It seems pretty unlikely that it was as many as three or four people. Yeah. Then that means there's a good chance it was Santa and Seven. Hi, girl. I know, I moved. That's how it looks. But why would they do it? Their motive. Have I interrupted something? Hey, stop making it weird. Uh. Uh. What is it? There was something I wanted to speak with you about, Junpei. Could you come with me for a moment? Go ahead. Okay. 
What did you want to talk about? There was something I wanted to check. Yeah? What's that? If you'll excuse me. I think we can start skipping again. Oh, no, oh. apparently not. Hey, what, what the hell are you doing? Grandpa, grabby hands. I'm just checking. No, 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 stop. I am... Just as I thought. What exactly are these pieces of paper hiding in your pocket? <sighs> you switched them, didn't you, when we voted? Um... <sighs> well, I can't say that I care. I managed to get through the numbered door I wanted, despite your mischief. Then, why did you... Oh, simple curiosity. I hope you won't think ill of me for it. Uh... <sighs> okay. Let's... Check the flowchart again. We have this key done, so we are going to skip to the next room. Yeah, come on, there we go. Don't really like the flowchart interface in this one. It does not feel responsive. I'm not sure if it's just because of how the PC clicking works or what. We've seen a lot of new stuff, but there's still more to come. Tune in next time to see what else changes in this path.